Hey folks, uh, this lesson is graphing square root functions. I think it's a, a reasonably easy uh, module. Uh, I just taught it to uh, my morning class and it, I, it seemed to go easy. So we're going to graph, um, uh, the parent graph is going to be f of x equals the square root of x. And so we're going to move it by h and k. Here we're going to stretch it. Do you remember the A on the outside is a vertical stretch? Okay, and um, if it's positive, it goes up. If it's negative, it goes down. And here, the, when it's 1 over B and it's on the inside, this is our horizontal stretch. So if it's positive, it goes to the right. If it's negative, it goes to the left. Okay, and remember, HK is that opposite same stuff. Okay. All right, so here we go. Let's get started here. So we're going to graph square roots here. So let's graph the parent graph of uh, y equals x squared. So here's a chart right here. So notice um, I'm putting in perfect squares. You can put any number in if you want to pick up a calculator and hit your square root button. But whatever x is, y is going to be the square root of x. So the square root of 0 is 0, the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 2 is 2, and the square root of 3 is 3. Okay, I'm on my prep period, and I don't know if you hear the chatter in the background. There's a, a class with a really, really thin wall, and they're having some sort of activity, so you can hear the students talking in the background. Anyways, so uh, so there's our y value. So now we're going to graph 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. So 0, 0, 1, 1. Here's 4, 2. And then here's 9, 3 right there. Okay, so there's those points. And then just go ahead and draw your graph right there. Okay, so that's going to be our parent graph right there. Okay, so what's our range? Okay, a range is up and down movement. It doesn't go down forever. It goes down to zero. And it looks like this graph keeps going up. Because if I, you know, did the square root of um, 100, that would be up here at 10, somewhere up here. Okay, so it does continue to go up as x goes to the right. So state the range. So um, there it is. Y is greater than zero. And state the do um, describe the end behavior. I thought I was going to say state the domain. The domain is x is greater than or equal to zero, just like uh, y is. Okay, the end behavior is is where the arrow goes. The end. Okay, so it's going to infinity as x goes to infinity. It goes up. So y goes to infinity. So that's our end behavior. Remember doing that last year? and I am too, um, that really fun one, okay? Uh, so when graphing uh, these graphs right here, we're going to use these points as our reference points. We can use this one also. We can use this one also, but we're going to use these two guys. This one goes up one, right one, okay? If we went uh, to get to this one, this one went up two to the right four, or to the right four, up two, okay? All right, so that was our parent graph right there. So HK moves uh, our point zero, zero, and remember it's kind of opposite, same. So if that's like a X minus three, then this would be um, three right there, okay? And this is the same. So if that was like plus four, that would be four. Okay, all right, so A is our vertical stretch. Now if it's negative, it flips it down here and it would be going like this if it was negative, okay? So it would be reflected. And then you have some of those on your assignment, okay? B is our horizontal uh, stretch. So um, uh, it's kind of the reciprocal of whatever this number is right here because B is in the denominator. So whatever that denominator is, sometimes you won't see a denominator. If that was a 2, then B would be equal to 1 half. It's the reciprocal. Anyways, it's a horizontal stretch. So it's how much we go to the right. So here we went up 1 and to the right. I'm emphasizing to the right. It's to the right, whatever that is. Uh, if we get to one of those right there. And if it's negative, it's going to go to the left, okay? All right, and then so let's go ahead and graph and describe the domain and range using set notation, okay? All right, so uh, always graph the parent graph right there, okay? Now there's some extra points that we can graph. I, you know, I'm, we're just referencing those points all the time. So, I mean, we could do 4, 2 and reference that point. We could do 9, 3, square root of 9 is 3 and reference that point right there, okay? So this 0, 0 is going to get moved by this HK by 3, negative 2. So there it is. So over 3, down 2 right there, okay? And then this is our vertical stretch. 
tells us how much it goes up. Okay, so the up part on this one is up one over one. So this says we're going to go up twice as much and over one. Okay, so this one just says we go uh, uh, from three negative two, we go up two over one. Okay, and then if we did this point right here, um, uh, on the parent graph at 4, 2, okay, Daniel was asking me this, so, so this one would go, okay, so from the parent graph it went up 2 over 4, so from this one it's going to go up twice 2, which is 4, it, so it goes up twice as much as this one goes up, it goes over the same, so if we went up uh, twice that it would be there, it would still go over 4, so it would go like to right there. So that would be my, my next point. So up 4 over 4 would be right there. And so that's, that kind of gives you a guideline. And so if we wanted to go up 3, this guy would go up 6. Okay, so up 6 would take me to right about there. And it would go over 9. So it would be you know somewhere like way over here. So it kind of gives us a nice general idea where this graph is going right there. It's a great question by that by Daniel. Okay, so uh, the domain is um, uh, for the red guy right here. So the domain is how much it goes to the left. It starts here at x equals 3 and goes, I'm sorry, did I say to the left? To the right. So this graph goes to the right forever, so it's just greater than or equal to 3. The range is a y answer, so, so uh, y is greater than or equal to this negative 2 because it goes up. Okay, and it said put it in set notation, so these funny brackets are in set notation. So this says the set of x in this vertical line is the words such that such that x is greater than or equal to 3 and the set of y such that y is greater than or equal to 2 okay it's just in set notation all right so here's another one okay so this is a horizontal one okay so this tells us this number down here is how much we go over so the parent graph is this guy okay so we go we go up one over one except this one's going to tell us to go over two and since it's negative we're going to go to the left two let's do the vertical sh I'm sorry the HK so the H is two and the K is one opposite same so over two up one okay now remember the parent graph goes up one over one. So this uh, this two is going to tell us this negative two is going to tell us to go up two. I'm sorry, um, no, I'm sorry. We still go up the same one. Whoo, almost blew it. But we go to the left two. Okay, we go horizontally twice as much as we went horizontally on this one. And since it's negative, it's going to go to the left right here. Okay, so go to the left two. It should be right about there. Let's do the other one, okay? Let's do, um, uh, let's do, uh, here's four two, okay? So let's see if we can get this other guy right here. So instead of going up to over four we go over twice as much we go up the same amount so I'm still gonna go up two but it's gonna go over eight okay so there's two so there's six so it would be somewhere over about there would be about over eight okay and then that would help you uh, make that graph right there so something like that kind of helps you guide that graph right there okay all right and then so the domain you guys is how much it goes to the left and right this one goes to the left so it's x is less than or equal to the x value and y is it's going up y is greater than or equal to the y value right there okay and there it is in in set notation right there okay all right, so now we're going to be given a graph, and we're going to go ahead and, and, and write the equation, okay? And they give you the hint, okay? This is my hint. They say this is going to be a horizontal stretch, okay? So here's HK right there. So careful, these, are, these uh, squares are going by twos, okay? So, two, so this is at one, and this is at negative two. So that's HK right there. So we know that much of the equation. Okay, now remember the parent graph goes up one over one. This one's going to go, still it goes up the same one, but it goes to the left one. So that's going to be negative one, and that's what B is because it's going to the left. It, and they're telling us it's a horizontal one because the one over B. So B is that negative one. So just clean it up, you guys. So one over negative one is negative one. So either one of those is, is okay with me. 
Okay, all right, so here's another one right here. So here is HK, so now this graph is going by ones. So this is negative one, negative two, and then this is negative one. So negative two, negative one, remember opposite same. So this is X plus two minus one, opposite same from these numbers right here. Okay, now the hint is this is a vertical stretch. Okay, so remember the, the parent graph goes up one over one, So, but this graph goes up 3 over 1. So that's what A is. A is 3. Okay, so just go ahead and plug that guy in and there's your answer right there. Alright, so I, uh, um, uh, let's talk about um, the average rate of change. We talked about this, I forgot which module it was. So um, uh, recall that the average rate of change on the function f of x over the intervals x sub 1 to x sub 2 is given by that right there. We just do f of x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Okay, and that's just slope formula. I don't know if that makes a sense right there. So just think slope when you see the words average rate of change, okay? And I told my students, you don't have to write this down, but I would have felt guilty if I didn't do an application problem that was out of our book right here. So here we go. So the approximate period T of a pendulum, that the t uh, which is the, the time it takes a pendulum to complete one swing, is given in seconds by, here it is right here, T equals 0.32, so there's a vertical shift, or stretch right there, it goes up 0.32 over 1, okay, by the square root of L, where L is the length of the pendulum in inches. So you guys know a pendulum on a big, uh, like, uh, grandfather clock, so it goes like this, doo doo, doo doo. So uh, the length of the pendulum in inches is this length right here, okay? So use the, the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 inches and to find the average rate of change over the first and last intervals. Okay, so the first interval is from here's x sub 1, x sub 2. The last intervals is this x and this x, okay? So we're going to use here's the f of x is, so this would be f of x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, and then we're going to do f of x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. All right. Oops, that's my chair, my garage sale chair. All right, so let's go ahead and plot these points on a graph. So there it is right there. Okay, all right, and then let's just slide that up right there. It says find the average rate of change. So there we did. Uh, right there, so the average rate of change is that formula, so we're going to do it uh, with these two intervals right here, the first uh, set of intervals and the last set of intervals, that's what it said. Okay, so I get uh, 0.95 and 0.05, and then it says uh, explain what these intervals represent. So the average rate of change from this guy right here uh, and this guy right here, well, it's bigger from these guys, so Think of slope of a line. I don't know if I can, I, I can't draw that right here. I went up to the board and I put my yardstick up right here and I said, think of that slope right there. Can you see that slope is a little bit steeper than that slope right there? Okay, so the average rate of change is a little bit greater. Well, look, that number is greater than that number right there. So something like that. Okay, so the average rate of change is less for the last interval. The average rate of change represents the increase um, uh, in the pendulum period with each additional inch of length, okay? As the length of the pendulum increases in, in period time per inch of length, it becomes less, okay? All right, you guys, you're just doing uh, the graphing part with me and, and writing equations of the graph. All right, take care.